I'm very excited today to come on here and make this video. I've actually been trying to make it for about an hour here at work and we've had customers coming in and out that keep uh, uh, interrupting me and, and phone calls and everything. So uh, I'm just hoping that I can get the video done this time. But the reason why I'm coming on here today to make this message is a brother uh, in Christ had wrote me an email yesterday in regards to uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what my experience was. He had people that were writing him and, and uh, you know, he's trying to gain understanding from the Lord, seeking the Lord. And, and he was just wanting to know my experience uh, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And honestly speaking, I haven't uh, made any video or, or made it many status uh, updates uh, about the very subject. Um, but I wanted to come on here today and, and share this video with you because I believe uh, that what the Lord has shown me uh, in the past 12 hours could really help some of you because I know it has helped me. And I'm really excited because uh, the Lord Jesus has given me this revelation of what was holding me back in my life, what was keeping me uh, from, from the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what was keeping me uh, from the fullness of of Christ, what was keeping me from the manifestation of the power of God coming into my life. And um, I hope that uh, uh, the Lord can lead me to share this with you so that some of you out there that are watching this video, it might not be for most of you, but there may be one or two people watching this video that this could be uh, make a difference in your understanding uh, of what what's holding you back uh, from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, so what I want to share with you is this, I was, uh, after I received the message, uh, this email from the brother, um, yesterday evening, I, I took a walk, uh, in my neighborhood with my dog, as I normally like to do to, to just get along with Jesus and talk to him. And I often pray in tongues as I walk around and, and as I was doing that last night, uh, I just started to listen, listen for the voice of Jesus. Uh, I was just really searching for him, and I was asking him, you know, Lord, please explain to me the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Please explain to me, um, you know, uh, how I can help my brother have a better understanding, how, you know, I can I can testify, you know. So I began to just ask him for understanding, and he put two words in my spirit. He spoke clearly in my spirit. Uh, this first word was the word humility. So he spoke humility, and I knew it was him. And I just began to think, to just, just, you know, meditate on humility. And then as I turned around to head back home uh, in the opposite direction, he put the word humble, humble uh, in me. So I just had the words humility and humble in my spirit. And then as I journeyed back home and just, just began to just praise the Lord and thank the Lord and, and just glorify him and praise him. Um, you know, he gave me the scriptures uh, in Philippians 2. And I want to share with you. Uh, the summary of, of what Philippians 2 and the first 10 verses is basically saying. Uh, what it basically says is we must think of ourselves as Jesus thought of himself. You know, he was our perfect standard. So, you know, we must think of ourselves as he thought of himself. Although he was God manifested in the flesh, Jesus, he took on the status of a slave. He became a human being and he offered his life as a ransom for you and he offered his life as a ransom for me and everyone. So can you imagine the humility? Can you imagine the, the humbling experience that Jesus had? You know, God manifested in the flesh who made himself a human like me and you and, and he actually humbled himself and he took on the status of a slave. Can you imagine how humbling it was for him to go through what he went through willingly. Most of us don't even have the, the courage to witness for Jesus to our neighbors, let alone lay down our life for our neighbor, lay down our life for our enemies, lay down our life for the world. Although Jesus was a human being like you and me, he conquered this flesh. He was a man and he conquered this flesh. He lived a perfect and sinless life, my friends. And you're asking me, you know, how does this tie into the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How does this tie in uh, with humility and humbleness? Well, my friends, those two things, which are basically one and the same almost, those things were missing from my life. 
You know, for over 20 years, uh, you know, I was in darkness. Over 20 years, I was a Bible believer. Uh, most of that time, I was uh, following a doctrine of once saved, always saved. I didn't realize that I was following once saved, always saved, and I never even heard that before. I just thought that, you know, the blood of Jesus covered all my sins. I thought that, you know, I could just keep living my life, and as long as I believed in Jesus and confessed him as my Savior, that I was okay. I did not understand the, 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 uh, the obedience. I did not understand repentance. I did not understand holiness. I did not understand the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells in those who truly believe. My friends, I was powerless. Uh, most, most Christians, uh, they confess that they are Christians, but they have not had the manifestation of the power of God. They have not had the Holy Spirit come upon them. They lack the fire baptism that John spoke of and that the Father promised for all those who truly believe in Jesus. My friends, as I took this to Jesus, he gave me this re revelation of humility. He gave me the reve revelation of being humble. You see, up until a little bit over a year ago, just a little bit before I came on YouTube, um, I was getting hungry for Jesus. I was really getting hungry for him. I began to really search for him. I began to really cry out to him. And looking back now, I didn't really realize it then, but I'm just realizing it actually yesterday and today. What was missing from my life was humbleness. What was missing from my life was humility. Um, and I want to share a little bit of what I wrote back in response to my uh, brother in Christ email uh, that he was asking about my, my, uh, my experience with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to share a little bit of it with you, uh, so please bear with me. I was telling you uh, about eight years ago, I got involved with a ministry, a Pentecostal apostolic ministry. It was really a small group of men that were uh, really basically following each other. Uh, you know, I thought I had found the truth. I thought that, you know, um, that I was in the truth. Uh, you know, I, I thought that this was the uh, what was missing from my life. So I was baptized in the name of Jesus. Um, you know, and I received the gift of speaking in tongues. Um, but, you know, I was still uh, denying the power of God in my life. I was still practicing sin. I wasn't living a life of holiness. I wasn't living a life of obedience. And I surely wasn't dedicated uh, to the fruitful service of the kingdom of God. Uh, so my friends, uh, I, was in, I was in further deception. I no longer was in the deception of the Baptist church that I was baptized in and, 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 and supposedly born again over 20 years ago. Now I was under this uh, different deception. But you know what was missing in my life not only was repentance, but these two things that were missing in my life um, was the attitude that Christ had, that attitude of humility, that attitude of humbleness that was missing in my life. I always loved the Lord. I always, I always loved him, but I didn't really love him because I wasn't obeying him and I didn't have the mind of Christ. And I surely did not have the attitude of humility and humbleness that God had. I was lacking the very nature of Christ. I was disobedient. And I was in rebellion. I was sabotaging the promise of the Father of the indwelling of his spirit. So not until not much longer than a year ago, because I came onto YouTube in uh, December, December of, of, of 2010. Not much, not much longer before that, I want to share with you a little bit of my testimony of when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what came before that. Um, when I began to truly cry out to Jesus... And humble myself before him. Literally, I was getting as low as I could get, uh, becoming one with the floor even. Um, I was emptying myself. You know how a cup, you imagine a cup. Imagine you just emptying a cup out. You know, not all the way. Empty some of it out. There's still a little bit of, of, of substance in there. Empty that cup all the way out to where there's nothing left in that cup. That's what I began to do. I just began to empty myself out. Um, I would get as low as I could get. I would be constantly crying out in, in the rooms of my home. Uh, in the rooms of the workplace, I was crying out, emptying myself of all self. I was confessing everything to the Lord. I was pouring out myself until I was empty. I was forgiving everyone that, that the Lord would bring to my mind. I would forgive my, I forgave myself even. And I remember uh, one night, uh, late last year, I, I was in, I was in the living room, 
I don't know where my wife was. I don't know where everybody was at, but I was in the living room. I was all by myself. Um, I must have been in there for over an hour. I don't even know. Um, but I was laying prostrate on my living room floor. I was laying there on the floor, laying just flat out, laying on the floor. I, I think I was on my face for part of the time, and I think I ended up rolling up over on my back. But as I laid there, the Lord, the Spirit of God, just came down and just did a spiritual surgery. That's the only way I could describe it. The Lord just did a spiritual surgery on my heart. I had been asking him to give me a new heart and a new mind of Christ. And he came down and he gave me a new heart. And I've never been the same since that night. Literally, it was like when I, out of your belly flows rivers of living water. And I've never been in, in tune with the Holy Spirit like I was that night and, and, and how I can continue be, be in the presence of God when I tune into him. I can just continually be in his presence. It was just such a feeling of purity. And I know I was truly born again that night. Um, and I know that I was filled with his spirit. In humility, I was born again. Jesus was our perfect example of humility and humbleness. And that was what was missing in my life. That was what was holding me back from the fullness of God's spirit. Soon after that night, when I received that baptism of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was delivered me from smoking on December 24th of last year. He delivered me from idolatry of television, uh, you know, all these different activities that I was involved in. Uh, he delivered me from sports. He delivered me from uh, from television. You know, we destroyed our television. The Lord told us to get rid of the TVs. Um, I no longer uh, watch sports. I no longer do all of these things. And I'm not telling you that you have to do those things, but we all must repent we all must obey the voice of God. And I'm just telling you what he has told me that I must do. So I, I begin to obey him. And he just began to fill me with his spirit. The fire of God, you know, that consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. And that fire truly began to burn all worldliness out of me. And then, he, and like I said, he led me to YouTube. And he gave me this prayer language uh, where the spirit just leads me and gives me utterance. And I'll just begin to, to, to just speak in this unknown tongue. And I'll just start praying and speaking in this tongue. I don't, don't even know what I'm saying, but Jesus will sometimes give me revelation of what was said in that tongue, or he'll directly speak to me soon after or during. You know, it's, it's just all about Jesus. It's not about the gifts. It's not about speaking in that tongue. It's not about the details, you guys. It's all about worshiping Jesus in spirit and truth. And then to do that, we need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And yes, you need repentance. You need to, absolutely, you need to repent and believe. You need to repent and believe, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But without the character, without the nature of God, the humility, without the humbleness, you know, there is no way that God will come in and, and fill you up if you are arrogant and proud and boastful and have the character of this world. My friends, obedience is the key to the promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For many years, I grieved and I quenched the Holy Spirit. It was not until I denied myself and truly became humble that the Lord gave me this divine revelation of his spirit and revealed his heart to me. I want to share with you uh, a few scriptures uh, that will show you uh, some things that back up what I'm talking to you about humility and humbleness. In Matthew 23, 12, Jesus said himself, whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And then in James 4, the scripture said, God resists the proud, but God gives grace to the humble. And my friends, the psalmist wrote in Psalm 138, though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. So my friends, maybe many of you out there have repented of your sin. Maybe many of you out there are truly serving Jesus. Maybe there's some of you out there that are truly hunger and thirst for righteousness, that truly want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. My friends, this may be what was missing from your life. Maybe this is what is missing from your life. Maybe you have not truly humbled yourself. Maybe you have not uh, taken on the nature of Christ, that humility. My friends, get low. Get down. Get down and just praise Jesus. Get down and worship him. Ask him to give you a new heart. Ask him to give you the mind of Christ. Cry out to Jesus. Please cry out to him. My friends, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the power of God coming inside of you, empowering you to do the works of God for the glory of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his name is Jesus Christ. If you love him, you will obey him and do greater works than even he did.
My friends, Jesus loves you. He desires an intimate relationship with you. Draw closer to him, and he will draw closer to you. May Jesus bless you.